In this video, I'm going to cover how to control and navigate with the camera, and also how to identify and change the active camera. Welcome everyone, I'm Para AD. I'm using Blender 2.93. I've set up a small scene here to show the different camera options. We have three cameras in the scene. This is the active camera as shown by the black triangle here. Within the outliner, the camera icon has a small gray box indicating the active camera, or under the scene tab, camera. To view the active camera, simply click this icon, the shortcut numpad zero, the tilde pie menu we set up in the last tutorial, or in the view menu, cameras, active camera. Also note the shortcut is listed there. Once we're in the camera, we must select it to modify its position. Select it, and now we have the orange border around it. You can also select within the outliner. The traditional tools such as G for grab now work with grab, middle mouse wheel to dolly zoom, or GZZ for dolly zoom as well. GZ to lift, R for roll, R again for free roll, right click to discard or left click to confirm changes. The camera can be locked to view. This is accessed in the end menu, view, view lock, camera to view. I highly recommend right clicking and adding that to favorites, which will mean when you press Q, it'll be in the quick favorites, lock camera to view. Now we can move around our scene as normal, but the camera is locked to the viewport. Once it's in position, be sure to deselect that option. Additionally, using the tilde key accesses the fly walk mode, WASD to move around, shift to go faster, alt to go slower, Q descends, E ascends, spacebar snaps to the position, G or tab enables gravity, B to jump. Once you're happy with the position, left click to confirm. And remember we have the home key to go full screen. Simply orbit out to exit. The camera of course can be moved freely in the viewport, but to get the most out of this, you best open a new window so that you can see what you're doing, just like this. So the importance of the active camera is when you render the scene, that is the view that will be used. The active camera can be changed several ways. The easiest for me is to select the camera you want, use the shortcut control numpad zero, and that snaps to the view and makes it the active camera as seen by the black triangle here. Once again, the icons gray there, or also in the scene tab, camera, Right, there's the active camera, which can also be changed. When you're in the view, the active camera can be changed very easily like so, and then it'll snap the views around. In the case that you have the viewport positioned in a really nice position that you want the active camera to move to, simply use the shortcut Control alt numpad 0 and that will snap the active camera to that current viewport position. And of course, we can do some fine tuning with any of the movement methods discussed so far. We can set up a local camera, which is dependent on the view. So let's drag in a new window, bring up the end panel, go to view tab, and then under local camera, enable that. And we can change this to a different camera. So in this view, when we change to that camera, it'll be this one, but uh, in this window, it's a different camera. And when you render, it depends on where your mouse cursor is. So if it's down here, it'll render there. Up here, it'll render there. So it just gives you a bit of flexibility. We can use constraints to constrain the camera to always track to an object. So select the camera, go to the constraints tab, add constraint, track to, select the target, Suzanne, and now the camera is tracking this object. I've set up an add-on to make this very, very simple. 
Hey everyone, I'm just going to jump in quickly and show you how to install the add-on. Open the link to my Gumroad page below. We can enter zero for the fair price. Uh, click I want this. Back in Blender, go to F4, Preferences, Add-ons, Install. Browse to your download location. Double click. We'll enable it there. And now it's available in the end panel, Power 8D Tools. We have set the camera to the depth of field automatically for the object. So if no camera is selected, it defaults to the active. So we can simply select this object, track to selected, we're tracking this one. Or we can select another camera, track to, and now this one is tracking to that one. Or we can say, select this one, track to new empty. Now that camera is tracking to a new empty. And if we jump into the camera tab, we'll see that the depth of field is set to these objects. Let's undo that. I also want to show off camera mirroring. So let's make this camera the active camera with control numpad zero. Mirror it with control M X X. And now we have a mirrored version of our scene. This can be useful for troubleshooting uh, oddities or just double checking the lighting or something like that from a different perspective. Our view is a bit out of skew, so simply reset with front or side view. A neat trick is positioning lights with the camera. So select the light, control numpad zero, and now we are controlling the light as if it was a camera. So we can fly around our light, bring it in, left click to confirm, you can see that it's been positioned. You'll need to reset an active camera though, because if we go to view active camera, it's still set to the light. So we can simply select a camera up here. In the next video, I'll be covering how to animate and keyframe a camera, switching a camera during an animation and things like that. Back with a few more tips that I forgot to mention. So the first is Scaling the camera within the viewport doesn't affect it, it's simply a visual thing. However, if you click the lens and pull it, that is changing the focal length. This can be seen in the camera tab, lens, focal length. So watch this field here as I adjust it. 